and welcome back to yet another exciting week of the Lazy Money Game. In this week's episode, I will give an update to my portfolio, and then I will try to once again gamify the journey towards financial independence, and how that keeps me motivated in this turtle race. At the same time, I need to clarify my strategy a bit, since I have been asked a question regarding the dividend yields in my portfolio, since it is very obvious that I could have invested for much higher dividend yields than what I have currently done. So I will try to answer that question as well. So let's start with a portfolio update. The first thing we immediately notice is that there's a green circle for this week's episode, meaning that the portfolio is up in value compared to last week. If we then go to the portfolio values tab, we can see that the value has increased by $1,800. And at the same time, the cost of the portfolio has increased by $1. The reason why the invested capital has increased by $1 is due to the spin-off from Merck, where they have spun off the business called Organon, and I have inputted $1 as the invested capital. This is simply just a definition that I prefer to use, because if I input zero here, then I will have divided by zero over here, and I simply just prefer to have an actual number. So that is the reason behind that. If we then turn to the more humoristic title of this video, Trust Me, I'm a Millionaire, this is of course due to the fact that my portfolio has now crossed 1 million Danish kroner. And just to give you the proof, you have the exchange rate for dollar into Danish kroner, 6.1417. And if you multiply that with the dollar value, then you can see that my portfolio clearly is above 1 million Danish. My title is of course heavily inspired by this very entertaining video, trust me I'm an engineer, I will of course leave a link in the description for that. If you have three and a half minutes, I highly suggest that you go and check a look at this video because I couldn't stop laughing after I have watched it and I can see that more than 12 million people have watched it as well. So it is quite popular even though it's eight years old. So with the best investor voice, trust me, I'm a millionaire. And just to emphasize this, I am not more or less trustworthy due to my portfolio crossing some arbitrary value. I am simply showing what I am doing for your entertainment purpose. It is because I truly believe that more people can benefit from seeing how other people are doing when they have a clear strategy. And hopefully they can get some inspiration out of that and say, perhaps I can do this as well. If we then continue to my favorite tab, namely the dividends tab, then we can see that I have received a little more than $50 within this week since I received a dividend from Pfizer and one from Exxon Mobile, giving me a total for this quarter so far on 814. So you can see that I'm very well on track to beat the last quarter where I have received $826. So everything currently is going according to the plan. And now that we are on the topic of dividends, let me try and turn that over to my goals and how I use it to gamify my journey towards financial independence. So I like to keep things as simple as I possibly can. So in my Excel spreadsheet, I have typed in four columns, one with level, one with completed, one with US dollar and one with time. So this is heavily inspired by a role-playing game or an RPG game called Diablo 2, which was published more than 20 years ago, where you at a maximum could reach level 99. So the way I use this as an inspiration is, the first couple of levels should be quite easy to reach. I mean, $10 a month in passive income from dividends, that doesn't require too much of saving, but at least it gets you going on your journey. And then you can see level two, that's $20, level three, that's $30. And then all of a sudden I start to kick in a quarterly goal. So I even have something in between the 30 and $40 a month. And then after $40 a month, there's even a yearly goal. So this is just a way to easily have your eyes focused on the next achievement. So as we continue further down this list, then you will notice that the numbers are not increasing linearly. Because for instance, once you have reached $100 in monthly income, then the next monthly update comes with $150. And 
and the same goes for the quarterly updates and for the yearly updates. This is just a way for me to, at the end, reach $2,400 because currently I believe that should be sufficiently to live off from my perspective. Of course, your numbers might be different and then you, of course, have to edit the numbers above. And if I were to follow the logic completely from Diablo to the game where I have taken this idea from, well, then I should increase the last 10 numbers much more since it really takes much more of a grind for the last nine levels. But I have just kept it as simple as I could imagine. And you can of course argue and saying, well, if it takes me 20 years to reach this goal, then probably this number should be higher because this is what is sufficient today for me. But in 20 years due to inflation, this number must be higher. If we then use my portfolio as an example and type in the completed dates, then you can see that I'm already quite far on this journey. So if we scroll down here, then you can see that I have actually completed all the way down to level 26 already. However, I'm actually still missing level 25 since I have not achieved $3,000 in yearly income yet. Let me show you my portfolio and explain why. So if we go back and take a look at my portfolio, then we can obviously see that, that my estimated yearly income is well above the $3,000 mark. But I mean, if I am to go in and look at the dividends which I have actually received, so for instance, from July to July, I'm still below 3,000 since that is less than 2,700. If I then take from June to May, then I'm also below 3,000. So currently I cannot actually cross out the mark of $3,000 in yearly income. I of course expect to hit it sometime within this year. But as of now, I'm not crossing out any of my goals before I have actually achieved them. One thing is that I'm expected to achieve them. Another thing is to have actually achieved them. And since I like to do things on a more conservative side, that is why I have actually fulfilled goal number 26 and not goal number 25 because you can very clearly see that my quarterly dividends has breached the $800 mark. So if we go back to my goal sheet, then I can actually cross off the $300 mark from November 2020, the 400 monthly mark for February and the 500 monthly for May. Whether or not you want to use averages on monthly income or you want to cross them off when you have just had one month where you have been above is of course a personal preference. I like to do it this way. I know that of course I'm not receiving these high numbers every single month, but it motivates me. It's not like I feel more motivated to invest in companies in those particular months. That is more of a coincidence and I would like to keep it as such. And just to follow this Diablo 2 analogy, I actually went in and updated the last nine levels. So I have increased the numbers here quite significantly. So now you can see that level 99 would require $4,000 in monthly income. So the most obvious question for me to ask is of course, how far are you? What level are you? And what do you consider to be your financial independence number if you were to put a number on level 99? If I then continue to the question from the audience regarding dividends and the investments in my portfolio, because if you take a look at my portfolio and then scroll to the right here, then you can see that the highest dividend yield in my portfolio is a bit above 5%. And if you go to the dividends tab, then you can see that the average dividend yield is a little over 3%. So why is it that I haven't bought companies that pays around 10% in dividends since I am so much focused on increasing my passive income when you look to my goals. Well, despite of my goals, I do not want to buy companies solely based on the dividends that they are paying. I'm also looking to the valuations of the companies that I buy, meaning I do not want to pay too much for the stocks which I'm buying. So for instance, if we look at a company like 
annually capital management since they have a dividend yield of more than 9%. Well, look at how the stock has performed since 1999. It is actually down in value. Well, that doesn't sound like a good investment for me. So just because a company pays out an extraordinary high dividend doesn't make it a good investment for me at least. How about if we look at another extreme like Apple for instance, where you can see the stock is up tremendously in value. I mean, it was trading at what? 25 cents. So you would have more than a hundred bagger in your portfolio if you have bought it back then. Well, currently I don't really think that Apple fits the criteria in my portfolio, since I don't consider Apple to be undervalued, since it is trading at a PE ratio of around 25. Well, I know that some people will say this is the tech industry, there you should expect to see much higher PE numbers. Well, call me conservative, but if you have read The Intelligent Investor, then you should know that stay away from companies which have a PE ratio of above 18, unless of course the company is growing with the same number as the PE ratio, meaning for a company to be worth a 25 PE ratio, then the company should grow with a rate of 25% a year. And despite the fact that Apple is growing quite quickly, I don't think that they are actually growing with a 25% rate a year. So currently I would stay away from that business, but that is simply my personal preference. So despite the fact that I actually think Apple is an absolute wonderful business to own, if we look at the revenues here, we can see that they are definitely increasing. But when I'm looking at this graph, I don't see a revenue which is increasing with 25% per year. So currently, I'm not willing to pay the price at which the Apple shares are currently trading. For me to buy this company, I would need to see a significant drop in the share price. And I don't see that happen because people absolutely love the products and there is a lot of hype with this stock. And it is so, so popular. So this is where I'm looking to books like One Up on Wall Street by Peter Lynch or The Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham. Try to find some of the stocks which are currently not favored by the market, but where you can buy them with a margin of safety. Currently, I would say that is simply not possible with Apple. So that is the reason why I'm not investing there, even though I think it is an absolutely wonderful business. So with these two examples, I hopefully have made it more clear that I'm not only investing for the dividends. I actually try to look for fairly valued companies before I buy them because I really want to have that margin of safety. And personally for me, it is more important to see a company that can grow in the future than they are starting with a high dividend yield. Because if the company will grow a lot in the future, well, then they most certainly will increase that dividend over the long time as well. So that actually sums it up for yet another exciting week of the Lazy Money Game. So I was happy to share that now I have officially become a millionaire. I mean, hopefully you feel more inspired to figure out what level you are regarding your financial independence journey. And at least you know more about how I invest and why I'm not only focused on the dividends when I'm buying companies. And hopefully you will be as entertained as I was when I was, trust me, I'm an engineer. So now there's only a couple of things left to say. Trust me, I'm a millionaire. Remember to comment on the video or leave a like or consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps me out a lot. And until I see you next Sunday, bye.